Right, this is tutorial question N10. Okay, this will be a little bit of a revision of a couple of topics. Except I won't go through the, the whole thing in detail just because of time. This is far too big for an exam question because we're going to be working out the center of gravity, second moment of area, and then working at the, work, looking at the combined stresses. What we have is figure A, this here, shows the cross section of a short column. So there's a force coming down through this. Um, it's made from a 200 by 150 I section and it's got a 250 by 12 millimeter plate on the top. So there's a plate welded to the top there. It says that it's welded to one of the, fl the flanges. The, in terms of a, an I beam, the, the middle part is called the web. The top is called the, the flange, and the, the bottom is also called the... We've got a vertical load coming down 400 at P. Calculate the maximum stress developed in this section. Right, overall, we have our stress formula, and this is what we're working towards. The most difficult part is going to be this Z value or trying to work out what our I value is. So this is why you need your second moment of area. And to get your second moment of area, you need the center of gravity. So the first thing that we'll do is work out the location of the center of gravity for both of these together. So this I column, um, this section, will have a, an XX about the middle but because this plate has been added to the top, that will raise the center of gravity like upwards some amount. So let's, um, let's work through this. So one um, depth of neutral axis. From the formula sheet on, on the back, we'll class the, the plate as one and the and the section is, is two. And we'll take moments around the top. What well, we're trying to find out, Y bar times by. Now from the table for our I section, our area is 6650. That's for the I. And then we plus the plate on the top, which is 250 times by 12. Right, so from the top, it's a 12 millimetre plate. So our Y1 is six millimetres times by the area of the plate. And then in terms of the, the I section, it's 200 by 150, <coughs> the, this distance being 200. So in terms of working out the distance from the very top all the way down to there, it's 12 plus 100. So our Y2 is 12 plus 100, and times by the area of the section from the tables, our area is 6650. Six, So my neutral axis is 79, and from the bottom it's 133. Three. Just working with the dimensions, the distance from the compound neutral axis to the, <coughs> to the neutral axis of the I section, that distance there is 17 millimetres, and the distance from the top to the position of the neutral axis for the I is 112. These are just dimensions that we need for the rest of the calyx for the second moment of area. So one, we've got the neutral axis. Two, second moment of area. To work out the second moment of area for the compound section, it's the second moment for the 
i plus the second moment of the plate. We'll use our formula from our handout. So we've got the parallel axis theorem, which is like i z z is i x x plus a h squared. And we've also got for us for a rectangular shape when we look at the plate, we've got the b d cubed over 12. <coughs> so if we're looking at the i value for this i section, we get i x x for the i section from the tables. That's written at the, um, at the top in your question. So that's that equals 47.6 times 10 to the 6 millimetres to the 4. So that's the, the I value for the I shape about its own <coughs> axis. But we need to know that about the position of the, the neutral axis for the compound, which is 79 millimetres down. So our area... So it's plus a times h h squared. Our area is six six five zero, and that's multiplied by this h. And that h value is this distance, which is one hundred and twelve. Take away seventy nine. So that's just for the the I section, and then we add the plate. For the plate, again using the parallel axis theorem, we've got B D cubed over 12. So our B is 250 times by D cubed over 12, plus the area times by H squared area is 250 times by 12 and then the distance from the center of gravity for the compound to the midpoint of the plate it's 79 take away 6 So that's our I, X, X for the compound section. Because our force is off two neutral axes, we have to work out what I, Y, Y is also. So you can have a go at this in your own time. I, Y, Y should come to 27.53 times 10 to the 6. So our force P is 400 kilo, kilonewtons. It's at this point here. It was 17 millimetres up. And it was 25 millimetres. So we're not exactly to scale, but that's, it was 25 millimetres. Stress is force over area, plus or minus M over Z. So if we start looking at our bending stress first, our Z is I over Y. What I'll do, I'll, we'll call the, the top part A, A dash. That's along that line. And we'll go along the bottom there, that would be B, B dash. If we wanted to try and work out what Z along A, A dash, we've got to take the I value across our X, X. So it's, that was 70.9 times 10 to the 6. In terms of our Y, it's when, whenever we've had a rectangle, our Y has always been half of D. But if you have a, a T shape, 
it means that our neutral axis is a little bit higher and our y value is always referring to where the neutral axis um, the distance from the neutral axis to the extreme point so it, oh, it was always um, y was always d over 2 for a rectangle it's a little bit less for a t-shape in terms of when you have a compound section it's just the distance from the the neutral axis from the compound section to the furthest point so if we wanted to work out what the the stress is at AA we need that distance from the central to the um, to AA so that's 79 millimeters <coughs> millimeter cubed and if we go from um, to the bottom for Z B B dash Again, we just need our I value and then divided by the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom, which is 133. So, well, what we're looking at is the, is across the XX for M over Z. So we've got our Z, our M, XX is our 40,000, 400,000 kilonewtons times by the distance E, which is times by 17 so our stress at AA A, a dash is this M over Z. So our, our M is 6.8 times 10 to the 6 divided by the, the Z AA. So that's 7.58. So that's the stress at AA dash. If you do the same for the stress stress at B B dash, putting in the M and R Z for B B dash, we end up with twelve point seven six. Across the YY, y, we have to do exactly the same. The stress at AA dash is this M over Z Y. Uh, M is 400 across the Y is 400 times by 25. So it's 400 and we put it into Newtons times by 25. If we divide it by our ZY, remembering that our Z equals I over Y. So the I was 27.53 times 10 to the 6. That's the I value. If Z is I over Y, it's the same as putting our I down here and multiplying by our Y distance is from the, the neutral axis to the furthest point. This is 250 millimetres, so that distance is 125. So we've got times by 125. So that's where our I was 27.53 and our Y is 125. 45.4 newtons per millimetre squared. 
Similarly for B, B dash, you've got your 400 times by 25, again over the Z, but the distance to B, B dash from the center That's 150, so it's 75 millimetres to the edge. So we've got exactly the same 400,000 times by 25 times by 75 over the I value. That's the bending stress covered across both axes. In terms of the direct stress, That's the W over A. What we have is this 400,000 divided by the area of the whole column. So this is the, the I section plus the plate, which was 250 by 12. Right, the very last bit, I appreciate that these are quite long, some of these questions, and uh, I'm videoing most of these sessions, and I'll, I'll definitely yeah, I'm scanning and email through my, my text today, just in case you're not keeping up with it. So we've got to the point where we, we've now got to work out our com combined stress at each corner. And this is where we're working out the stress at A, A dash, B and B dash. We've just worked out <coughs> our direct stress, this one here. So our direct stress, we're saying that compression is going to be positive, so we've got plus 41.5 for all corners. And then we've got to go across, in terms of our bending stress, we've got across YY and we've got across XX. So our Y, Y for A and A dash is 45.4. 45.4. I'm just looking at that image there. So our direct stress is positive if we're applying a force across YY. For A dash, will that be positive or negative? So again, we're looking across the YY, so we're looking horizontally. That force coming down there will create a compression on A. So therefore we need a plus on A and we need a minus on A dash because it will be creating a tension. Looking at our B, again because the force is on this side it will create a compression there on B, compression plus and minus tension. So our stress at BB dash was 12.76, no it wasn't, 27.24. Then looking at our stresses across the XX, which is what I've got at the top of the page. For AA dash, I've got 7.58. And for B, B dash, I've got 12.76. Across this XX, because my force is at the top, it's going to create a compression at A and A dash and tension at B, B dash. 
So because it's compression at the top A, A dash, it's positive. So for my A and A dash, I've got positive. And then for my V, B dash, it's minus. Add all those together. They're all newtons per millimetre squared. Our maximum, maximum stress is 94.48, and that's at location A, which seems obvious if we've got our force in this quadrant, this corner, that's why we've got our maximum stress at that point. So whilst the question has asked, what is the stress at each of the corners? Really, in reality, all you would want to know is what is the maximum stress that's going to be on this. So if you knew that the, the force is up there, you could work out what is the maximum stress, 94.48. It would be worth working out what is the stress at this corner, just to see whether it's in the negative. No, all of these values are positive, so the whole column is under compression, where if any of the um, items were negative, then part of the column would be under tension, and that might determine the type of material that you choose.